Hello and good evening, I'm Marsh D'Souza and you're watching Goa 365, our headlines for the day. Vice President of India says peace is prerequisite for development. Bus owners submit memorandum to government against speed governors, threaten to keep buses off the road. Lucrative cargo business not taking off due to lack of infrastructure. Customs and Central Excise Department in Goa lose Rs 20 crores annually, says Rakesh Sharma. Sporting club de Goa hold JCT to a draw at ONGCI League. We also have carnival festivities at Kurtori. Now the news in detail. The Directorate of Art and Culture of the Government of Goa organized the D.D. Kosambi Festival of Ideas, which was inaugurated by the Vice President of India, Mohammad Hamid Ansari, in the presence of Governor S.C. Jameer, Chief Minister Digambar Kamath and Dr. Meera Kosambi, daughter of Damodar Dharmanand Kosambi. Didi Kosambi, who was an internationally acclaimed scholar and his works transverse over various disciplines, the most prominent of which are the sciences of ethnography, anthropology, biology, genetics, philology and psychology. The festival was organized with an aim of promoting the intellectual culture of Goa provoking curiosity and creativity, thus encouraging a shift from its preconceived Susegad notion. Chief Minister Digambar Kamath, while addressing the gathering, named a few other pioneers in every field who Goenkar should be proud of. To give current examples in the likes of Kishori Bai Amonkar and Lata Mangeshkar. In our art, in the paintings of Gaitonde and Lakshman Pai and Francis Newton Souza, and in our scientists who have been in the forefront of research in our country, like Mashelkar and Anil Kakurkar. Dr. Meera Kosambi, a prominent Indian sociologist and daughter of D.D. Kosambi, elaborated on her father's nature and achievements. She wrote a paper on genetics which was very successful and what became known as the Kosambi formula was widely used by professional geneticists. As he says, he was accused at times of not appreciating his own formula. As a mathematician, Kosambi taught himself statistics by selecting practical problems to solve. One of them was a study of punch-marked coins. The study of old coins aroused his curiosity about the kings who struck the coins. The study of old records, he says, and I quote, meant some mastery of Sanskrit of which I had absorbed a little through the pores without regular study." End of quote. As he was too busy to undertake a regular study of Sanskrit, he took up a specific work. The simplest was Bhartrari's Shatakas of epigrams or Subhashitas. He ended up writing an extensive essay on Bhartrari's philosophy as articulated in his Vairagya Shataka an essay entitled The Quality of Renunciation in Bhartrari's Poetry. And in the process, he says, he fell into Indology, as it were, through the roof. But Bhartrari's text was defective, so he understood, he, he undertook text criticism, studying about 400 manuscripts. Mohammad Hamid Ansari, Vice President of India, explored the passion for peace and its relevance in the present situation. Much work has been done in the past decade and a half to develop the framework for peace, for peacekeeping, peace building and conflict prevention. The approach, however, is riveted on prevention rather than cure. In 1988, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi told the United Nations that in consequence of doctrines of deterrence, international relations have been gravely militarized and that peace which rests on a search for a parity of power is a precarious peace. He proposed a time-bound action program for a nuclear-free world and the initiation of negotiations to establish a comprehensive global security system under the aegis of the United Nations. After having
having ignored this and other suggestions for nuclear disarmament, an initiative has recently been taken by some established personalities in the United States. Concerned over nuclear weapons falling into dangerous hands, they have called for a global effort to reduce reliance on nuclear weapons to prevent their spread into potentially dangerous hands and ultimately to end them as a threat to the world. A world without nuclear weapons requires the necessary political will to build an international consensus on priorities. This, they concede, cannot be done without the vision of moving towards zero. We will not find the essential cooperation required to stop our downward spiral. The festival will be held for the next two days covering fields of science, literature and history with the academicians of the calibre of Sri P. Sainath, recipient of Megsese Award of Journalism, Professor Ramila Tapar and Dr. Vivek Montero. Earlier, the Vice President inaugurated an exhibition of P. Sainath titled Visible Work in Visible Women. Following the footsteps of truck owners, bus owners have now issued a 14-day ultimatum to the government not to enforce installation of speed governors on their buses, otherwise they would resort to strike and keep buses off the road throughout the state. In a press communique, the Bus Owners Association, though showing a concern for the increasing number of deaths due to road accidents, have blamed it on congested and narrow roads. In a memorandum submitted to the Chief Minister, Chief Secretary and officials of the Transport Department, they have made their opposition to the speed governors very clear. They have also mentioned in the memorandum that their drivers cannot imagine of driving the buses at speeds between 80 to 120 kilometers per hour because huge quantum of vehicles on the narrow roads. Further, they have stated that in case of their vehicle developing mechanical snag during the course of routine trips, they would have to wait for the RQ officers to arrive and inspect the entire process of rectifying the fault and then put a seal again. Their fear is, if no officer is available, then they will lose business, so also, this could encourage corruption. The Bus Owners Association also threw a challenge to the government to show documentary proof that buses are responsible for the increasing number of deaths as compared to smaller vehicles. Finally, the association is opinion that instead enforcing the rule of speed governors, the government should concentrate on streamlining, revealing traffic chaos and widening the roads. It may be recalled that last week the truck owners had protested against installing speed governors and has also issued a deadline to withdraw their proposed enforcement within a fortnight or they would keep their vehicles on the road. We have lots more coming up after the break. Stay with us.